And Father, we're just so in awe of who you are, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you this evening, Lord. Yes. We ask you to join us, Lord, and in union with your, our spirits, with your spirit, Lord, tonight. Yeah. And Father, just direct my, my tongue, Lord, this evening, Lord, and how you want this to go. And Father, my greatest desire is that these people will walk away changed and, and they'll walk away with something yeah. new that they can hang on, on, hang on to, that they can apply to their lives. Yeah. And, Father, we give you the glory for that, Lord, because it's you who does all that, Father God. It's yes. nothing that I can, I do. I come to you empty, Father, right now in Jesus' name. I just empty myself out before you, Lord, and I thank you for the Holy Spirit just to, just to guide me and, and, and just speak through me, Father. And, Father, I thank you for a powerful, powerful evening tonight in the Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. God is so good. He's so good. He's so wonderful. The, there's, there's not enough things I could say about him. I could exhaust the whole vocabulary of a dictionary of all good, you know, exclamations about greatness and, and beauty and wonder and might and, and, and magnificence and, and, and I could never, I would never, you know, run out of things to say. I, you know, eventually I would run out of things to say because there's just no explaining who he is. I mean, just, just the magnitude of what he does and who he is and what he's done and what he's doing. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really enjoying the services on Sunday. Amen. Man, I'll tell you, man, the Holy Spirit is on the move. Yes. And this place, I, I, it's, it's ready to explode. Uh, and if you don't see that, then... then then I got to get you my pair of glasses here so you, you can check it out. But uh, amen. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, um, uh, living a life of seeking. Amen. And this is something that the Lord impressed in my heart. You know, when I was, when I was a, a very young believer, um, you know, a legitimate question was, why do I need to know the word? Right? So you come to God, you know, you got that big conversion and you give your heart to Christ and then you go, oh, you know, well, you know, why do I need to know so much? Because there's so much to lose if we don't, if we're not aware, if we don't make ourselves aware of what God <laughs> wants us to know and, and how he wants us to operate, then then, you know, we put ourselves at risk, yes. right? It's, it's like being, it's like, it's like taking advantage of an innocent child, like, like the child over there, you know, she can't defend himself, yeah. can't talk for himself, mm -hmm. can't speak on, 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 on any kind of authority, authoritative level. Right. And so God wants us to mature you know, I believe the Apostle Paul said once, you know, why do I have to still feed you milk when you should be on eating Amen. meat already? Yeah. You know, you should be in the meat of the word Amen. and instead of the milk of the word. Yeah. And, and God is looking for a church that's, that's, that's on fire for him, that wants, him, that wants to excel, who wants to, who wants to grow with the Lord. Amen. 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 With the Lord's leading. Amen. Amen. So Amen. praise God. I got a little uh, thing here I got to read. It says, some seek money, some seek fame, some seek drugs to ease their pain. But if you choose to seek out God, your life will never be the same. Amen. I searched high, I searched high and I searched low, not really knowing which way to go. But by finding Jesus, my life has changed. In seeking him, I found my way. Amen. No more envy. No more strife. In seeking him, I have new life. Amen. One more thing you should know. In seeking him, there's immortal life. A life that really has no end. Yes. So you can seek him again and again Amen. and again.
again. Amen. Praise God. So this thing that we're doing here called Christianity is no simple task. You know, I compare it to when, you know, before I got saved, and, and you know what? Being lost is easier because there's no expectation. There's no accountability. You just do what you want. You just do what you feel like. And it's okay. So you think. And then you come to the Lord and you open up this thing called the Word. Oh my, what a wonderful gift the Lord has given us. His holy word. Because he wants to do some stuff. I got a little analogy here for you. Amen. You know, so, so check it out. This is you. This container is you. This is you. And you were, you were filled. Before I came to the Lord, I was filled with all kinds of junk. Right? 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 And even if you were the best person and, a, and considered a good person by the standards of the world, you were still full of junk. Yes. Because there's only one way to the Father, and that's to the Son. Right. And, and so you need a relationship with the living God in order to sup with the living God, in order to get all those wonderful benefits, salvation. Yes. Right? Amen. Forgiveness. So here's what happens. Here comes the word. This is the word. And God comes in. He comes into the narrow side. See, because this is, this is the wide side. So great is the road that leads to destruction. Yeah. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Yeah. And so the good Lord, he comes and he starts to do his work in you. Yeah. Right? Because you know what? It's not automatic. You don't come to the Lord and boom. Oh, I'm a saint now. I got the revelation. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm all, oh my gosh, I'm holy. I'm holy as he is holy. You don't come with that revelation to Christ. That comes with the renewing of your mind Amen. by the word of God. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says, not, don't be merely a hearer of the word, but we need to be a doer. Yeah. And so now we allow the word to get in us, right? And so God starts to, hey, man, and the future looks bright. And man, oh, man, you read one thing. Oh, man, yeah, I'm born again. Oh, praise God. Jesus loves me. That's the first revelation. God loves me. Amen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So, oh, oh, wait, two of them fell out. Uh-oh. Uh, it wasn't supposed to work like that. All right, I pushed too hard. My, my bad. My bad. So, the, so but anyway, the faster the better, you know. So the first one comes out, John 3.17. Put that up on the screen for us. So, John 3.17, if you would. Yeah. Let's read that one. What does it say? Oh, I got to get to it. Hang on. Let me get John 3.17. So the first thing falls out, John 3.17. And what verse? 3.17. Right. So the 17 verse. John 3.17. It says, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, Amen. but to save the world through him. So salvation has come to you now. He's gotten, he's gotten rid of that condemnation and guilt that was bogging you down. That I don't, that I'm not deserving of this mindset. Right? Because we didn't think we deserved it. Man, I used to say it all the time. Oh, if I walk in that church, the steeple's going to fall down on me, man, because I am a rank sinner and God hates me. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Praise so then God comes in and he keeps coming. Amen. And you keep reading the word. This is you reading the word, man. Amen. This is the transformation mm. process. Yeah. And I just wanted to show it to you because this really makes it really real. And boom, and he pushes a little. Oh, and there goes another one. All right. So this one, we got to go to Isaiah 53. Go to Isaiah 53. I figure it's a lot more fun this way, you know. I give you something visible, something, you know, something uh, visible for you because we are a visual people, especially in this generation. It's all visual. Okay, Isaiah 53, verse 4. <laughs> yet, yet. It was our weaknesses he carried away 
It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his, tr that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was bruised for our iniquity. Wow, I'm reading a different version now. My, the King James Version just kicked in. That's funny. I'm sorry. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins, and he was beaten so we could be whole. Amen. Hallelujah. And he, and he has white so he was whipped so we could be healed yes. he was whipped so we could be healed so that's weakness right weakness grief and sorrow in Isaiah 53 that's what God wants to do mm. he wants to purge those things out of us yes. because we are you know as holy as we we look on Sunday you know the battle starts on Monday amen amen because the, the battle starts on Monday, and it's the truth. And, and we all, you know, hey, we don't float into our pants yet, right? Right? I mean, last time I remember I put my pant leg on one at a time, and I didn't walk in the bathtub on top of the water, you know? So, you know, until that happens, then we, we're perfected, right? We'd be in heaven, actually. So, and then here comes more of the word, man. And you're, getting, you're starting to get excited. You say, wow, I don't have, wow, God forgives me. Amen. Wow, he died for my sin. Another one drops out. Here we go. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians. Oh, look at this. Oh, man. We're having a, a technical difficulties. <laughs> I told you I was going to need help. <laughs> but anyway, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. 5, 5.21, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. Oh, my word. You mean all my sins are forgiven, past, present, and future? Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. If you were to walk out of this door right now and die, and, and you did something trivial that was sinful, would you go to heaven? Wow. People go, oh, I don't know. Well, it's not a trick question. The answer is, yes, you're going to go to heaven. Because Christ is your Savior. Amen. He is your salvation. He is the one that sacrificed for you. He's the one that traded places with you. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And then finally God comes on and you're just like, wow, you're really excited now. And you, ooh, yeah, man. Let's get more of that word. Oh, and here comes another one. All right? Let's go to uh, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind, and self-control. Oh, my, you mean I don't have to be in fear anymore? Amen. You mean I don't have to worry where my next meal is going to come from? Praise oh, but there's so many things to worry about. People get you in fear, man. Mm. Don't follow those fear mongrels. That's right. Every, every need. Amen. God has met every need. Yes. He's going to meet your needs according to your, his great riches and glory in Christ. Amen. You've got to believe it. If you want to receive it, right? right? right. Amen. Amen. So the fear factor is now gone. You can walk on the earth. You don't have to be afraid of death anymore. Amen. What? Thank you, Lord. But everybody's afraid of death, aren't they? Not if you're a saint of God. Exactly. If you have a relationship with God, you're not afraid of death. Because death has no sting on you. Christ absorbed the full brunt of dying by sacrificing his life on the cross for you. He, the great exchange, if we call it, right? Praise God. Here, here comes the Holy Spirit now, and you get filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and man, wow, bam, oh, the transformation is complete. The transformation is called nothing.
by any means will hurt you. Yes. Right? Amen. So now you're, you're in God's perfect will. Yes. Because you've shedded all these things. And I'll read the last one. is Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. I know it's a little bit of a different type of sermon. Thank you, but don't be afraid of different. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm just looking from the other side of the mountain. Amen. All right. So preachers, some preachers preach from this side of the mountain, and then some on this side, and then some on this side. Amen. And so, you know, we're all looking at the same mountain. Praise God. Ephesians 4 18. Their minds are full of darkness. They wandered far from the life God gives because they have, they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth. Learning is knowledge. Learning is powerful. You have learned the truth that comes from him. Throw off. Throw off. Amen. Throw off your old sinful nature. Amen. And your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, I love when the word says that. Man, when you see that word in the Bible, you need to perk up. And you got to get yourself ready to hear what, what it's going to say. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Amen. So you're not going to go around and be the party pooper anymore, right? Amen. You're not going to be the, uh, uh, the brother brass or the sister sandpaper anymore. Amen. You're not going to be the bearer of bad news anymore. Amen. You're not going to come in and focus on everything that's negative anymore. Amen. Because Christ died for you. And forgave you from all your sins and all your unrighteousness. And he's done all this because it pleased him. Yeah. God, get that. Yeah. It pleased him to see you in victory. Yeah. To see you walk in victory with him. Yeah. Redeemed from all these past demons that have bogged you down for all your years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not even off the first paragraph here on the notes. So, but, so, <laughs> oh my Lord. I'll read a, a, a little, a little thing from Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. He was a powerful man of God. He said, if you seek nothing but the will of God, he will always put you in the right place at the right time. Amen. <clears throat> How many people you've heard say that? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, man, I was in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you was in the wrong place. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise God. So Matthew 6, 33. All right. Seek the kingdom of God. Hey, you guys know this scripture. You know, Praise seek God. ye first the kingdom of God and the King of James. Yeah. <coughs> New Living Translation. Seek the kingdom of God and underline that phrase above all else. Hmm. And live righteously. And he will give you everything that you need. Amen. Amen. Righteously. And everybody, yo, everybody's, oh yeah, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And we get excited, we run around the room. Amen. Praise God. At least we should. I'm going to give you a definition for that word righteous. I know most people say, hey, it's, it's right standing with God. And yes, that is a definition for it. But this is an awesome definition. It's, it's the ability to stand before God as if sin never existed in your life. Amen. Wow. Amen. And you go, oh, man. Yeah. What? Like sin never existed? I mean, you know. You know, and we've had people sing songs, oh, I can only imagine I'm going to stand, sit, kneel, cry, whatever. You know, and we talk about that. But you know what? God doesn't know your sin. Amen. It's forgiven. Yeah. And when God forgives, he doesn't forgive like people forgive. That's right. 
People forgive only for a moment. <laughs> right? We go, okay. Oh, you messed up big time, Steve. You know, my wife will tell me sometimes, oh, you messed up. I said, oh, uh, can, you, can you forgive me? Hmm. Amen. You know, no, she forgives me right away. Amen. She's a righteous woman. So she goes, yeah, I forgive you. But then the next argument comes, and then, hell, I remember when you, oh, whoa, wait a minute, that's, wait a minute, How, what happened? That's not love, that's not love, wait a minute, I got to turn to 1 Corinthians and show her again, I say, that's, see, it doesn't hold an account, Amen. love doesn't hold an account, Amen. because we can't love the way Christ loved, that's our problem, yeah. you know, uh, we, we, well, we can, if we, if we hone ourselves to that point and we build ourselves up yeah we could get there but it's hard because we just been we just grew up in all kinds of nonsense right i mean you know i'm speaking to myself anyway so but anyway you know uh that word seek uh, defined is is in the sense of coveting earnestly striving after the things that come from above that's what that word means you know so it's it's coveting you know a lot of people say you know you can't covet things but you can covet the things of god Amen. you know you can lust after the things of god people Amen. you hear the word lust and people go whoa yeah. wait a minute that's a sinful word no it's not it's it, there's a definition behind the word and it means to it means just to you know is that's all you want to do is just worship god that's all you want to do. Yeah. Just worship him. Yeah. In spirit and in truth, the Bible says, right? Amen. So 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And again, I want to go back to that, right? I, I know I've read that already, but I like to read scripture once, twice, sometimes even three times in a row, because then it begins to sink in, Amen. you know, because repetitiveness is the way we learn, right? You do things over and over again. With me, it's, you know, I'm terrible with people's names. And, you know, I got to, I got to talk to you like three, four, five, six, seven, eight times before I, you know, I hear that name over and over again yeah. until I get it and, or make an association with it. And so what we have to do in our lives is when we're walking with God is that we have to make the word association of what we're going through to line up with the word. You follow what I'm saying? So when, so when a situation arises, you got to say, you know what? I'm not bending down to that, to that uh, level of, of, uh, of uh, laziness at work, you know, whatever. You know, whatever you're going through. You know, you go to work and, and you meet all kinds of people. That's our ministry, right? Is our field is when we get out there and work. You know, not everybody is a saint. And nobody is, not everybody is a Christian. So, uh, but the thing is, we need to rely on it. We need to pull it out. You know, just the way I had to read the word and I had to get filled with it in order to purge those things out of me. And then, you know, you got to learn how to rely on the word, right? So, you know, you just can't be walking around, you know, with, uh, 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 with, your, with your Jesus in a box. You know, this is called the Christomatic. See, Christomatic. And it says, danger, stop, don't know. Yo, be careful. There's power in here. Amen. You know, because you put it in there. And you limit it to that. Yeah. So then when things happen and things get rough, you, oh, oh, Lord, oh, help me, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord, please help me, Lord. Oh, oh you don't know what I'm going through right now, man. Oh, oh you should have heard what they said about me at work. They called me a holy roller. Oh, they hurt my feelings, Lord. Oh. And then, you know, and we hang on to Jesus for just a little bit till we feel a little comfortable. And then Sunday comes and, oh, yeah, we're praising with Jesus. Yeah, come on. Come on, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get all excited. Then Monday comes and we go. And we put, we put Jesus away. Supposed to be seeking him. Amen. Seek ye the kingdom of God. God. Seek his righteousness. Colossians 3 1. 
Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. I like that. Amen. Reality. Do you know that in Russia, if you go to the Soviet Union and you go to a museum, they have these, um, they have like a, a big uh, picture of John the Baptist baptizing people in the lake. And on the, on the caption, on the caption of the, uh, of the sign, it says, the fairy tale of John the Baptist baptizing believers in the lake. It calls the Bible account a fairy tale. Wow, wow is right. <laughs> like, what? What do you mean? The, the fairy tale, and then the, the, they have the, the painting with the crucifixion of, of, of Christ. The fairy tale of Jesus Christ crucified. It's not a fairy tale. They didn't get the memo. So, man, I'm telling you, if you're not, if you're not seeking it, because you're going to be bombarded all the time, every day. It's the minute you walk out your door. The minute you turn on the television at home. Mm -hmm. Turn on the TV. Boom. Yeah. Psh, psh. Here comes the, the drug commercial. Oh, well, if you're having this symptom and that symptom and this symptom, but, and you got to take this drug and that drug and this drug. And, and I mean, that is more and more prevalent day in and day out. Yeah. Right? And now, now you see the same sex couples together on the television. Yeah. Right? That was never, you never saw that back in the day. Yeah. Never, never, never. What are you going to do with this gift that you've been given? That's what you, that's my challenge to you tonight. What are you going to do with it when somebody challenges you? And they challenge your faith. And they challenge who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. You got all this revelation inside of you and then you can't even defend the gospel. Or sometimes you don't know what to say because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But you know what? They don't care about your feelings. That's right. Huh? Huh? In case you didn't know, they don't care. That's right. They're going to drag you out to the guillotine and chop your head off. You know, if, if, if the way this world's going right now yeah. against, you know, the anti-Christian movement, they don't want to hear you. Yeah. And we're scared. And it's okay to be scared. But what are you going to do? When the rubber has meets the road, you got to talk. You got to open your mouth. Amen. And you know what? You got to ask the Lord to help you yes. with those words. Yes. You know, I'm not telling you to go out there and make a fool of yourself, but I'm saying go out there and, and, and make your point. Praise God. Say, hey, this is a good thing to, to love on Jesus. Amen. Let me show you what he did for you. <laughs> All these scriptures, fear, gone, all sins, gone, hardness of heart, gone, uh, uh, shame, guilt, weakness, selfishness, sorrow, all gone. Peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Gone. Yeah, you've been through some stuff. Yeah, I had a few people die on me. Yeah, 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 I got laid off from work. Yeah, yeah, I've been through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. I've had some hate speech thrown at me. I had some prejudice thrown at me. I had some discrimination thrown at me. Amen. But you can't let that guide you because you're a child of God now. Amen. You're above those things. Yeah. Above only, not beneath. Right? We, we're, we're called to rise up. He, he says, I'm the glory and the lifter of your head. Praise God. Praise God. He's raised us to new life with Christ. Set your sights. Set your sights. I don't know. I got, I, I'm a gun owner. I know how to set a sight. You set the sight. You mount it. You set it. You got your, your focus. And you set your sight. And you set your sight with intention. Yeah. There's an intention. Whether it's a target 
or whether it's an enemy, if you're in the army, you're setting your sight. You have to set your sight. Yeah. And you have to be committed to it. You got to be ready when you pick up a gun, you got to be ready to use it. That's right. right? Am I wrong? I'm not even an army guy, and I know that. That's right. it, if you pick up a gun, you better be ready to use it. It's the same thing with the word. You got the word in you. You got it in your heart. You got it in your spirit. See your spirit. It's rolling around in there. All you got to do is just stir it up every once in a while. And I, mean, I mean, Brother Oscar, one service, he stood up. He said, he said people need to talk in tongues. You need to speak in tongues. Your spiritual language should be solidified in your life. I tell you, man, I'm not saying you ain't going to go to heaven without it, but you know what? It's the difference between a firecracker and a stick of dynamite yeah. in your prayer life. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. If you don't know how to speak in tongues in your prayer life, well, then you're always going to run out of words anyway. Amen. You're going to be praying and, and you're going to get frustrated because that's what happens with the spirit of men. We get frustrated. And we start praying, oh, oh, but why does this have to happen to me? And then you start crying and you have a pity party instead of a prayer. Amen. Right? <laughs> Praise God, I've been through it. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> and, and so this is why we need to seek the Lord. We need to seek him with purpose. We need to seek him like a rifle on a scope. We use intent. And, and then we have to seek him continually. Yes. First Chronicles 16. Let's go there. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to preach myself happy this, this evening. I'm, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. And I don't, I don't care what the enemy... You know, a lot of people, we talk too much to the devil rather than talking to the Holy Spirit. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. I don't care what my family members think. The first time I started speaking in tongues, they were looking at me like I had three heads, and I just kept speaking in tongues. And then they felt the power of the Holy Spirit fill the room. And then you lay hands on them, and they get healed. Praise God. Praise God. First Chronicles 16, 11. Search the Lord. Remember, that's what we're dealing with, seeking. That's just another play on words, Amen. searching. So searching, you know, you don't have to search for the remote control, right? So, amen. amen. <laughs> so search. Search for the Lord and for his what? For his strength. For, that's what he does. He makes you more than a conqueror. He gets you excited. I don't know about you, I get excited, man. And especially when I walk in this building, man, it's, it's like there's an expectation. I come here prepared. I come prepared. You hear me? That's what we got to do. You got to be prepared. We're shoulders in God's army. We got to be ready for battle, right? So, you know, you got to get your heart ready. Stop having an argument with your husband out in the parking lot. Ten minutes before you come to service. Don't be whipping on the kids before you walk in the door. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. All these little things count. They all add up. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it creates an atmosphere. When we come together as believers, it becomes explosive. Amen. And then the first note, man, our music ministry is fantastic. Amen. Man, they're, they're, they're on fire. Yeah. The other day when Deborah came up, I said, oh, the Lord said in the inside of me, he said, that's powerhouse. And I went to her after the service. I said, Deborah, the Lord gave me a word for you. Amen. You're a powerhouse. And she Amen. said, she started laughing. I was like, I was like, yeah, you're a powerhouse. She comes prepared. She comes, she brings it. Praise God. And it doesn't only have to be her. You know what I'm saying? It's all of us. Amen. Every one of us, every one of the singers that are up here, every Sunday, man, you can just you just see it on them. They're ready. They're ready. Amen. They're ready to usher in the Lord. Oh, yeah. geez. Now, see, that this is wrong. And then remember to silence your phone, especially the person who's ministering. Sorry about that. I thought I didn't. I'll have to edit that one out. 
That's all right. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Pastor will forgive me. Amen. So praise God because he's a man of forgiveness and love. So Amen. praise God. So anyway, getting back, you know, it's something, and that word continually, it signifies what needs to be done on a regular, continuous basis without interruption. I love that part. Yeah. Without interruption. That means when, when you're in the zone at home, you need to close the door behind you. Amen. Amen. You got to prepare for that. Amen. You got to prepare time for yourself. Make time for yourself. Uh, everybody says, oh, I don't have enough time. Oh, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. But you know what? We're always never too busy to do the things we want to do. Mm -hmm. You notice that? That's right. You notice how that works? I'm guilty. I've done it. I said, hey, man, I've done it. You know, oh, wow, Lord, I don't feel like reading the word this morning. Oh, I didn't sleep good last night. Oh, my Lord. And I miss an opportunity for the Lord to say something to me. Smith Wigglesworth once said, he says, we feed our, we feed our flesh three square meals a day and we give our... We give our spirits a little snack in the morning, mm. and that's it. Mm. And so that's what we gotta we gotta get away. We gotta turn this thing around, man. Amen. We gotta turn it around. We gotta stop. We gotta stop looking at Christ like he's limited. He's not limited. He's powerful. He's Almighty God. Amen. He's a God of too much. He's 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 El Shaddai, not El Cheapo. That's you true. know what I'm saying? Amen. He's not he's not a cheapskate. He wants to see you blessed beyond, beyond what you could hope and imagine, you know, all those things. So we have to prioritize, and I don't even know if I have time for all this, let's see. Uh, so we have to prioritize ourselves. All right, I got 20 minutes. We have to prioritize our seeking. Number one, whom to seek, right? So who do we have to seek? And that's obvious. We got to seek the Lord, right? Amen. I mean, if you're not seeking the Lord, who, who, what are you doing? You know, and, and, and the scripture reference I have for that is, is Isaiah 55, 6. Let's go back there. Isaiah 55, verse 6. It says, seek the Lord while you can find him. Yes. Call on him now while he is near. So that's what we have to do. We have to seek the Lord, you know, and, and, and that's Old Testament, you know. Today we have the Holy Spirit, so it's real easy to find him. He's right. He's right here. He's right here. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, the advocate, the one called alongside you, the, your helper in times of trouble. And you got to learn how to dig deep in there and, 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 and say, hey, Holy Spirit, Show me what I need to do today. Lead me. Tell me what I need to say to so-and-so. Tell me what I need to do at work. Show me what I need to do with my son. Praise God. Praise God. That's one of my favorite prayers. I have to pray that every day. And my son's autistic, and, and, and just every day, I have to find inner strength to deal with that. Amen. Every day. You know, I come in with a smile on my face and joyful and all that. But sometimes on the inside, I'm like, man, I'm discouraged a little bit. But then I have to correct myself. Amen. And I let the Holy Spirit correct me. The Holy Spirit says, yes, he says, Stephen, you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes. Don't worry about your son. All good and perfect things come from above. Amen. From the Father of light. Where there's no variable attorney, you know, it's just like. He's saying, hey, you know, your son's the way he is, but, there's, you know, that can change. Amen. You know, and just in a, in a second, in a Jesus second, it happened, and we have that expectation. But sometimes, sometimes, I have my days, and we all do. God knows we're not perfect. 
He knows. He, he, he knew we were human. He says it in the word. You know, there's a couple of scriptures like that. I don't know where they're at, but he says, oh, we, I knew they were human. You know, I knew their humanity or, or things like that. And, 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 you know, he knows. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's why he gave us the word. So, and that's why we need to meditate in it day and night, day and night, every day. So we seek the Lord. Number two, who, when do we seek the Lord? Well, we seek him first, Matthew 6, right? We read that already. Then seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then Psalm 63, 1, let's go there. You know, look at a lot of scripture today. And I usually don't do this because there's just so much that gets left behind. The scripture is so powerful. It's so, it's so rich. Psalm 63, 1 says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. And I think in the King James Version, it says, I seek you early in the morning. He has to be the first thing that comes to our mind in the morning. Because let me tell you, a lot of things can come to your mind in the morning. You know, I remember one day I woke up in the morning with the song Micah Re- and Micah, you know, the Micah Rena's dance. You ever have one of those days where you know, this stupid carnal song comes into your mind? Or, or a song that you heard way back in the 70s, and it comes to your mind, and you go, oh, my God. I wish scripture would come to my mind that quickly. And, I mean, you get, like, total recall of all the words. And you're like, whoa, man. <laughs> wow. I have heard that song in eons, and here I am reciting it, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. God. And my wife says, where did you get that song so early in the morning from? I said, oh, man. I said, I woke up with it. Sorry. I had to apologize. And, uh, and she does the same thing too sometimes. She comes up with some songs. And, and I'm like, hey, I said, let's worship the Lord instead. And, and then, we, then you got to turn you got to turn the boat around every time. You know, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm telling her myself, okay, to show you that, you know, we're all the same, man. We're all the same. We all have this, we all deal with a lot of different things. And, and, and as long as you're obedient to turn the boat around where well, you catch yourself, right? Yeah. And you say, oh, man, wait, I shouldn't be talking about that. I shouldn't be seeing that. I shouldn't be saying that. Oh, man. And so you repent and you keep going. And God says, what sin? You didn't say anything wrong. What did you say wrong? Right? God is the God of amnesia. I like to call him that sometimes. He's good at that. He's good at that. You know, you, you mess something up and you go, whoa. And, 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 and you think that it's going to be a tragedy, but then it turns out to be nothing to him. You see, we make things, we make things into a big deal. You know, we make the mountain, you know, the molehill into the mountain. Yes. You know, we're the ones who are responsible for that. So, you know, that's why the Bible talks about what you speak. And, you know, we got to control that little, that little rudder in our mouth called the tongue. You know, that likes to, uh, 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 and sometimes I got to catch myself and say, Steve, shut up. Even a fool appears to be wise when he's silent. That's my go-to scripture. And I go, <laughs> and so, you know, like we'll be at a fellowship sometimes and I'll be like, and my wife's looking at me and she says, Yo, slow it down, son, slow it down. So I'm like, all right. So we seek him first. We seek him early. First Chronicles 16, 11 says that we seek him, we seek him uh, continually, continually. First Chronicles 16, 11, let's go there. I didn't read that one yet. Sixteen eleven. Search for the Lord. That's just another word for seeking. Search for the Lord and for his strength, continually seek him. I like 12 too. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. See, I like that. Remember the wonders that he performed. You know, there are a lot of things that 
that, that we go through in life, you know, and like say these four plants here are, 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 are things that you're going through. So at this juncture, you're going through something and then you overcome it. And then you, you encounter another obstacle, you know, and you're like very interesting, you know, and then, and then you go and then you overcome that encounter and then you go to the next encounter and then you meet that encounter. And all these are, and, and what the devil tries to do, and this is a trick of the enemy, he tried to make you remember this thing that took place way back when, Right? Right? He tries to bring that back to your memory. You have total recall on everything that you ever did wrong. Everything. Everything. The enemy's there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the word devil means to strike as with many blows. That's the definition of devil. Okay? To strike with many blows. And that's what he does continually. Continue. Remember when you did that? Remember when you did that? Remember when you did this? Remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? Remember when you did that? And then we start crying. We go, oh, Jesus, come on now, help me. <laughs> but if the whole, but if the spirit, but if you were continually in the word, you wouldn't need to, because Jesus would be right here with you. He'd be right here with you, everywhere you go. Because out of your belly flows rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is there. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they're the three, but they're one. Amen. They're the same. They're all the same. You could say, Father God is with you. You could say, Jesus is with you. Yeah. Say, the Holy Spirit is with you. I like to say all three. We got a full boat here. Yeah. I got all three with me every day. Yeah. Amen. Protect me, Lord. Amen. And so I don't have to put them in a box anymore. I refuse to put God in a box. Amen. Refuse to put him in a box. Refuse to compromise. Refuse to let your emotions get the best of you. Amen. Amen. Wow. So we seek him first, we seek him early, we seek him continually. Number three, what to seek? We seek his peace. Psalm 3414. Psalm, oh. It says here, well, I'm going to start in verse 13. It says, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. Right? Amen. That's what the word of God does for us. I used to be a foul-mouthed creature before I came to the Lord. I used the F word as a, you know, as a noun, a verb, a pronoun, an adverb, you know, every, everything. You know, and, and, and the Lord turned that around. So he keeps my tongue from speaking evil. Amen. And my lips from telling lies. I used to be the biggest exaggerator in the world. Oh, yeah, I was on the high school basketball team. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Never was on it. I was on our high school football team. High school didn't have a football team, but nobody knew that. So, yeah, you know, yeah, man. I scored six touchdowns, and, you know, I, I was like, you know, you know. And why do we do that? Because we want to be accepted. We want to be accepted. We want to, we want to make an impression on people. Because believe it or not, people are important in your life. But back then, you had the wrong mindset. They were important for a different reason. They were important because of what you could get out of it. That's the difference between our relationships now. Right? Before we used to have relationships in the world, we had, I had some great relationships with some people in the world. But when I look back on it, it was because Johnny knew how to fix a, he knew how to fix a, an engine in a car. So Johnny was my friend, my best friend. Made sure he came over once in a while, gave him a couple of beers and some beers. Go out, hang out in the bar a little bit. I don't do that no more, thank God. <laughs> So, you know, I had all these different relationships, you know, because, let's face it, I got something out of the deal. And I was funny, so they thought I was funny, so I was amusing to them, so I was their comedy routine, and I helped them stress out, you know, get their stress level down or whatever it was. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> so it's the peace of God, you know, turn away from... Turn away, verse 14, 14, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Yeah. 
So, you know, there's a scripture in the word of God. It goes like this, right? It says, my peace, and the Lord gave me this revelation. Say, this is peace. And he says, my peace, I leave you. My peace, I give unto you. Right? And that's the transaction. Either way, I mean, you can either receive it or... If you're not ready, God says, it's right here. Amen. It's yours. God. That's yours. God. You can take it. Take it and use it. Yes. And apply it to your life. Because, man, there's, there's no... Uh, we need peace now more than ever in this world. Yes. The turmoil, the rhetoric, all the stuff on the news and TV and the world and all this craziness that's going on and, and hatred and hatred. Hatred. We need to seek that peace. Amen. And when you seek that peace, then it's peace. It's, 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 it's the word shalom. Thank you, God. And it means nothing, nothing broken, nothing missing. Yeah. That's what it means. Amen. Praise God. God wants you to live a life of nothing broken, nothing missing. You're not going to miss anything. Trust me, the world has nothing to offer you anyway. It has nothing. You have the goods. You have what it you have what they need. Yes. You have what they need, man. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we want to get the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. My peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Right, and then the other thing is we look for the precepts of the law, the precepts of God, his principles, you know. Uh, this is one of the principles that we're talking about, is seeking him. When we seek God and we endeavor to seek him, you know, things are going to come our way. We're going to be set free from, from, from these evil devices of the world. Or just yourself, man. You ever see somebody who, or know somebody who is just like their own worst enemy? You know somebody like that? Everybody knows somebody like that, right? You know, they're, they're just like their own worst enemy. They can't get out of their own way. Man, they need Jesus. Man, they need the peace of God. Man, they need to know what his precepts are. They got to know that God loves them. They don't know. They're in a constant battle within themselves. And that's what that, you know, and the Lord sets you free. He's what? You're free indeed. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And then we got to look for his goodness. Amos 5.14. And I'm going to run through a couple of more scriptures and then we'll close this up. Thank you, Father. Praise God. And we got to seek his goodness. Amos uh, 5.14 says, it says, do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper. Oh, oh! didn't we just read that in church the other day about, about the, 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 the uh, Elisha and the tower and, and the servant goes to the top of the tower and he looks out. He goes, oh my God, we're being attacked. And he starts to panic. And Elisha goes, no. Hold on, relax, take it easy. Amen. Chill out. Yeah. Right? That's what we used to say in the 70s, right? Chill out. Right. Chill, chill, chill. And, 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 and he goes up to the top and the, the prophet prays that his eyes be open and he sees that. But it just say, the armies, heaven's armies will be your helper. Amen. That same vision that that servant saw Amos calls your helper today. Wow. Amen. He's the God of too much. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Leave with that in your, in, in, in your mind and get it in your spirit. El Shaddai. The God of too much. The God of too much. The God of plenty. He's got a lot for you. And you know what? He's got an eternity for us. Think about that. It's not just in this world. It's not just in this meager life. That, I mean, come on. 
This life is so short. I was 21 the other day. Man. Yeah. You know what? It's still up here, man. You know, the gray's on the head, but, you know, I still got the fire. Amen. You know, on the inside, I think I can do stuff, and I can't really. <laughs> you know, I try to pick up heavy stuff. I'm like, oh, oh, I can't pick that up. Honey, can you come help me? And here comes my wife. All right, come on, let's do it. <laughs> and we got to pick it up. You know, I had two shoulder surgeries, but praise God, God's healing them up. And I'm healing up real good. So now I'm trying to strengthen myself. <laughs> but it's embarrassing sometimes, you know. You know, come on, where's the, come on, how many of us have that, that manly pride, you know, we were brought up with that man, macho man. You know, my father, he was a stern Puerto Rican uh, guy, you know, real machismo kind of guy. And, and he taught us, you know, to be proud and, and uh, you got to be strong and you got to know how to fight. And, you know, he, was a, he used to be a boxer and, and so he used to teach us how to fight. Oh, yeah, all right. And I never wanted to fight and he used to get mad at me. I said, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> uh, he said, that ain't going to help you when you get in, in, in a fight. So anyway, praise God. Praise God. So he's good, righteousness, meekness. Uh, Colossians 3.1, things above is what we got to seek as well. Uh, we read that one already. Four, number four, how to, how to seek. Again, I, we talked about it before, with a prepared heart. Second uh, Chronicles 19.3. Did we look at that? I don't remember. Let's look at it again. Second Chronicles 19.3. Oh, let's start in two. Jeru, son of Hanina, the seer, went out to meet him. Why should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? He asked the king. Because of what you have done, the Lord is very angry with you. Even so, there is some good in you, for you have removed the, the Asherah poles throughout the land, and you have committed yourself to seeking God. So, he, he made a prep, he prepared, you know, the preparation time in our lives with the Lord is never wasted time. Anytime you prepare for something ahead of time, it's always going to benefit you, you know. Uh, and, and so here this king, hey, you know, he turned it around. He said, I'm not going to do this false religion thing. And because of that, and because he committed himself to seeking God, God blessed him. So Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem. It was Jehoshaphat. But he went out among the people traveling from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, encouraging the people to return to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. And in a sense, that's what I'm telling you to do today. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we get weary and we wander, and we have to understand that, that God is, is, is wanting us to turn it around and seek him and solidify him in our lives to be the only thing and, and to seek him without being distracted. Mm. And, and, and even if you're married and you have 20 kids in the household, it's not an excuse. It's not. You got to make the time. Remember, you make time for the things you want. When the women want to go on the spa day, they go and they get a spa day. So you got to get a spa day with Christ. Amen? you got to make sure that happens every day. Amen. Every day. Seek him early. Seek him first. Seek him in the morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it right there. Father God, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. Oh, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. I, I, speak, a, I speak a blessing over these people, Lord. Why don't you just stand up and let's just let's just let's just praise God for just a quick minute before we go, you know, and take this energy and take it with you through Friday and Saturday 
and, and then come back to the fueling station on Sunday and, and let's do it again. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. Thank you, Father God. Father, we lift our hands up to you, Father God, and we glorify you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise and thanksgiving in our heart, Father God. And Father, we recognize that it's you and you alone, Father God, who we need in our lives. Father, help us to seek you to seek you in a more continual way, Father God. Father, help us to make time in our lives to seek you even deeper, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for these people. Bless them as they go, Lord. Father God, they're the head and not the tail. They're above only and not beneath, Father God. They're blessed as they came in. They're going to be blessed as they go out, Father God. And we thank you for the power of God to follow them out the door, Lord, and the Holy Spirit to speak to them all this week, Father God, and for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise God, church.